So lying down on your back, noticing the floor underneath you. Just having your hands, your arms a little way away from your body, your palms towards the ceiling. And having a little bit of space between your legs so that you're not holding your legs tightly. And just noticing your breath, maybe noticing your breath for the first time today. And if you can, breathe through your nose. So inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your nose. And continuing to notice that pattern of breath. Now, our practice today has got some uh, poses that are quite strong around the centre. We have quite a moving practice today. Moving practice just to try and help us settle a little in, our, in the mind, find balance. And so because it's based around the centre, some of our initial movements are going to be quite strong movements of the core, of the, the muscles at the belly. So it's not a practice that's really appropriate for pregnancy. If you are pregnant and practicing, please modify so that you're not doing strong abdominal work, not lying on your belly, not back bending, not taking really strong twists. So modify as you need to during this practice. If you've got any injuries, modify, make it easier. Remember, we're not pressing into pain. But for now, noticing your breath. And as you next inhale through the nose, maybe you're aware of the temperature of the air at the end of the nose, right? the temperature of the room. But as you exhale through the nose, you're aware of the temperature of your body. Your body has warmed the air. As you inhale, you might be aware of the temperature of the outside room. And as you exhale through the nose, you're aware of the temperature of your body. This is more of a sensation. Inhaling deeply through the nose, feeling your belly rise, your chest rise. Exhaling deeply through the nose, feeling your connection deepen a little more towards the earth. Inhaling deeply through the nose, again feeling that rising, lifting through the front of the body. And as you exhale, a softening back down. Now from down here on the floor, as you next exhale, squeeze your knees towards your belly, give them a nice little hug. Yeah, and then as you inhale, just let them soften away. So as you exhale, giving them a little squeeze. And as you inhale, just letting them soften away. Let's take that again. As you exhale, giving them a little squeeze. And as you inhale, letting them soften away. Let's bring our hands behind the back of the head. See if you can maintain that rhythm of your breath. Now that long, steady rhythm, breathing through your nose. We're going to reach our legs towards the ceiling. We're going to flex our feet so that our toes draw down towards us a little nice little stretch down the back of your legs. And then we're going to play around with waking up the belly. Yeah. So in this movement, if you want to, you can bend your knee as you lower it down or you can keep it straight. But what we're going to do first is we're going to imagine a little knitting down through the belly button that's drawing our low back a little closer to the floor. And on our exhale, we're going to lower our left leg. We're going to lower it slowly. And then as you inhale, you're going to draw it back up. Yeah. Now as you exhale, let's lower that right leg slowly. Again, still drawing down through the belly button, noticing that the low back is a little closer to the, the floor maybe than usual. We're going to inhale, lift that leg. Move in time with your breath. We're going to take two more either side. Right? So we're going to exhale, lowering that left leg down towards the floor, but your breath might be a little longer, a little shorter, so honor your breath. The inhale is going to lift it. And my leg is just hovering away from the floor. We're going to exhale, lower that right leg. Yeah, nice and long and strong. We inhale, lift it back up. Now your leg that's raised towards the ceiling can be bent, right? So we're going to lower that left leg. Yeah, and the right knee can be bent if you want it to. We're going to inhale, lift that left leg back up. We're going to lower that right leg, right? And the left knee can be bent if you need it to be. And then we're going to inhale and we're going to lift it back up. Feeling that belly nice and warm now, right? Let's give it a little stretch. We're going to bring the soles of our feet out to the edges of our mat. So they're quite wide. We're going to bring our hands down beside us, resting down on the floor. And we're going to draw our left knee over to the left-hand side. The right knee is going to rock over the follow it. And then we're going to draw that right knee back. 
And then we're gonna let that left knee be pulled with it and back over to the right hand side. And let's come back to center. Now from here, you can roll over onto your side and you can come up to seated. Or you can take hold of the back of your knees and take a little rock, loading your feet up off the floor and then rolling back down. And another little rock, floating those feet up off the floor and rolling back down. Let's take one more little rock, floating those feet up off the floor. And then we're going to come up to standing and forward fold at the front of our mat. Yeah, so in your forward fold, knees nice and soft. We're going to release down over the legs and let that head soften and release. Now stay here for just a couple of breaths. So inhaling deeply through your nose. Yeah, and then exhaling deeply through your nose and maybe you take this fold a little more deeply. As you inhale through the nose, you rise up a little away from the legs and as you exhale through the nose, maybe you fold a little more deeply. Let's take that one more time. As you inhale, you float up away from the legs a little and as you exhale, you fold a little more deeply. This time we're going to inhale, we're going to rise up to halfway lift. So now we're straightening the legs, right? Not locking them, there's still a little softness there. Yeah, we're shrugging those shoulders back and down a little. We're nice and strong through the belly. In the back of the head here, the curve of the skull is a curve of the spine. Now, where's the weight of your body? Are you rocking it back into the heels? Can you bring it a little more even so that the balls of the feet are connected as well, rocking down into the toes? Let's stay here for another breath, really finding ourselves in this pose. And then we're going to soften back down into forward fold. From forward fold, we're going to inhale, we're going to rise up to the chair. So we're going to reach those hands. Now, now they might come all the way back towards the side of the head, depending on your shoulder flexibility. Right? We can coil our tail just a little to minimize the curve of the low back but not to flatten. We're not trying to flatten the low back. We're going to stay here for another breath. And then with our next exhale, we're going to rise up to stand and we're going to draw our hands down beside us. That's it. So we're still standing at the front of our mat. Now we're in Tadasana. So grounding down into the soles of the feet, finding the floor underneath you, soften those shoulders. Let's stay here for a couple of breaths. Now, in this pose, you're grounding down into your big toe, your little toe, all of the toes in between, the ball of your foot and your heel. We're drawing those shoulders back a little. Yeah. And then we're softening them down the back. So we're noticing the way that we're connecting down towards the floor. We're finding that earth, and then that energy that is us is rising up and away again. So we're finding ourselves as we connect down to the floor and that energy that is us is rising up and away again. Aware of that again, we're finding ourselves as we're connected down into the floor, down through the feet, and that energy rising up through the body, stacking up, rising up out of the crown of the head, nice and low. That's it. Now from here, we're going to start really moving. We're going to make sure, or we're going to try, to really connect this movement with the breath. And so I'm going to give you quite specific breath instruction. Now, if a different breath works for you, then you're going to go with that, right? You're going to go with whichever allows you to breathe long and full and evenly. We're going to bring our hands into prayer in front of our heart space. We're going to rock our weight over into our left foot. And we're going to glide our right foot back into lunge. And now if lunge doesn't work for you, you're going to ground down through the outer edge of your right foot, but that's going to change the balance a little. It makes it quite challenging to come through this balance. So you're going to be really kind if that's where you're at. We're pressing down into the left foot. We're driving back through the right foot. We're rising up and away through this pose. And then that extended right leg, we're going to extend our right hand out long as well. Yeah. And we're going to reach that left hand back behind us. We're going to take this movement three times. <laughs> we're going to exhale and we're going to squeeze that right knee up and we're going to reach that left hand. So that's one. Stepping back. Exhale, squeeze for two. Stepping back. 
Exhale, squeeze for three. Now stepping back. And then from here, we're going to turn. So we're going to turn our left toes in, our right heel out. And we're coming sideways on our mat. Now we got that. We're grounding down through the outer edges of our feet. And then we're finding our big toes and we're grounding down through them. We've got this little lift and rise away. Just noticing that settling of the breath. We're going to keep with that movement though. We're going to fold forwards now. Have blocks down there if you need them. Maybe the back of a chair, whatever helps you. Or if you can, then one of your hands is coming down to the floor. What we're going to do is we're going to keep the left hand down to the floor. And on the exhale, we're going to draw that right shoulder back. So we're stringing the bow. And then on the inhale, we're bringing that hand back down. On the exhale, we're squeezing that left shoulder back as though we're stringing a bow, maybe bringing your gaze towards it. And on the inhale, we come back down. We can make this a little stronger if you like. On the exhale, this time we're going to point our elbow up behind us. And then on the inhale, we come back down. On the exhale, we squeeze that left elbow up behind us. And on the inhale, come back down. Now be really conscious of your movements on this one. On the exhale, we're going to reach that right hand up. Now the temptation might be to reach it towards the ceiling, but really honour where your movements are, right? Does your spine really twist that far around? Or is it more inclined that you're going to reach that right hand out? Keep breathing. Just because I've stopped my breath instruction, I don't want you to hold your breath. I want you to notice that with each exhale, maybe there's a little more space to twist. Right, or maybe with each breath you notice that you need to come out of the twist a little. We're staying here for one more breath. On the inhale, let's bring that hand back down to the floor and let's stay here for a breath. Just working the feet, bending the knees one at a time. Enjoying a little bit of rhythm here. And then that right hand is going to come down on under the face or you're resting it on a chair, remember. We're going to exhale and we're going to squeeze that left hand up. Remember the temptation might be to reach it straight towards the ceiling, right? But really honour where your movements are. Does it need to be a little more out to the side? To bring it to the ceiling, are you really kind of rocking your hips over to one side? Let's keep them even. Uh, let's keep the legs nice and strong. And let's see where the space is to stretch, stretch that left hand. We're staying here for another breath. And then it's on the inhale that we're going to bring that left hand back down towards the floor. And we're going to heel toe our um, feet a little closer together. Yeah. We're going to rest our elbows on our thighs, our palms together. And we're going to see if we can bring our ankles down underneath our knees. We're not here for too long. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reach our hands down into cactus arms and see if we can stay here down in this pose. Yeah. Strong, right? Strong. So modify it if you need to and come out of it. Let's rise up to stand and let's step back towards the front of our mats. How's that breath? Let's take a few breaths to connect back into it. Inhale through the nose. Feel that lifting, that expansion. Exhale, feel that connection to the floor. Maybe it's a little different for you. What is it that you notice with your breath? Aware of your breath. Grounding back into the pattern of your breath. Now from here, we're going to rock our weight over into our right foot. Yeah, we're going to step that left foot back. And again, we're lengthening the arm on the side with the lengthened leg. So we're going to lengthen that left arm out in front of us. The right hand is going to come back behind us. That's it. And we're going to take this for a movement of three, right? So we're going to exhale, take that step and squeeze. And then we're going to inhale and step back. It's okay if you just need to glide your foot up and not even leave the ground. Exhale to squeeze. Inhale to step back. One more time. We exhale to squeeze. And then we inhale to step back. We turn sideways on our mat. That's it. And then we take a little fold forwards again. 
right? Do you need your hands resting on a chair? You're at home, so you have those props. Or do you, can you come down into a little forward fold and find that space down the back of your legs, whatever the stretch is for you. So let's stay here for a few breaths. We're going to maintain that really deep connection to the breath. This is what this part of our practice is. It's really connecting to the breath, finding that connection of movement to the breath. So we're going to heel toe again our feet a little closer. We're going to bring our elbows on top of our thighs. We're going to rest our palms together in prayer. And I want you to connect with the muscles of your belly. Can you squeeze them, strengthen them without losing breath? Yeah, can you connect to them there? As you exhale, can you lift and engage the muscles of your pelvic floor? And here's our movement. Yeah, we're going to inhale, we're going to rise up, bringing those arms out into cactus arms. That's it. And then we're going to exhale, press back down, elbows to elbows, palms to palms. We inhale, we lift up, we take that reach. That's it. We exhale, we press back down. Now, if you like on this one, we can bring it into a little back bend. We can take this reach and we can lift our gaze a little, just a little. And then we're going to exhale, coming back down. Elbows to elbows, palms to palms. Let's come up again. Yeah, That's it. Let's come back down. This time we're going to stay. We're going to bring our hands onto our thighs, though. Now we're going to feel the muscles of those thighs nice and strong, nice and grounded, grounding down into the feet. And then let's fold forwards again. We're going to turn our toes inwards so that our uh, inner edges of our feet are aligned. And then we're just going to take a little forward fold here. Now there's a little more space between the feet than you would normally have in your forward fold. So, but we're going to soften our knees and we're just going to be here in this pose, letting the head go. And then let's bring those feet a little closer together. So now they sit bone distance apart. Yeah, we're experiencing this as a forward fold. Now, ways to modify your forward fold, you can have your knee, your elbows just above your knees. Creates a lovely little low back stretch. <laughs> now, you can be resting those hands on the back of a chair. And if you're feeling okay in this pose, we're gonna, they're really going to press down into the feet. And then we're going to take this into a little squat. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our toes out. You might need to bring your feet a little wider. Honor that if you do. We're going to rest our elbows now towards the inside of our knees. And we're going to slowly descend. Now if squat's not a pose for you, you can have your mat rolled up so that it's under the back of your, uh, um, underneath your heels. Yeah. <laughs> or you can be a little higher. It's all good. We're going to roll our shoulders up and back. We're going to notice as we exhale that we can squeeze up from the tail towards the crown of the head and we're going to keep those toes connected to the floor. We're not going to let them lift away. And we're staying here just for a couple more breaths. You take another lovely full breath. And then we're going to bring those fingertips down to the floor. If you're down nice and low, we're going to come back again into our forward fold and we're going to turn so that we're facing the front of our mat. We're going to step our feet back so that we're in downward facing dog. Now in downward facing dog, I'd love you to step one heel at a time towards the floor, just taking a little rock in motion. And I would love you to just press your hands nice and strong so that you're finding your middle finger two fingers beside it, your pointer finger and your little finger and then your thumb, right, grounding down into the floor. We're going to keep a little bit of movement going and then we're going to just uh, take a few pauses, right, but for now we're going to lower our knees to hold them off the ground. And then we're going to press back into downward facing dog. Now I want you to take one phase of breath with each movement. So maybe you exhale and lower your knees off the ground. And you inhale and you press back to downward facing dog. And maybe you take it the other way. But we're going to exhale and inhale. Whatever movement you're taking is fine. Let's take that one more time, lowering our knees to hover. And pressing back into downward facing dog. 
And from here, we're going to lower those knees all the way down to the floor. And we're going to press back into child's pose. And so here, your forehead is either resting down on the ground or if it's not reaching down to the floor, bring your fists underneath your forehead, really support yourself. Don't leave your head hanging there in mid-ear. Drawing those sit bones back towards your heels. Have enough space between your knees for your body to rest. And just start to soften and let go. Now we've had some time at the beginning of our practice to check in to start to notice how are you today, how's your body feeling. And we're stopping here again and we're going to notice. We're here in our child's pose. How is your body? How are you feeling? Have you pushed a little too hard? Are you feeling a bit of pain? Remember, you're not, your, your goal here is not to feel pain. It's okay to feel challenged. It's okay to feel hot. It's okay for your energy to lift, to feel that connection to your breath. But your body is good. Your body is wonderful. Take some time to appreciate and love your body and not push it into shapes that, that, that don't work for it. Notice your breath and be present in this breath. As you inhale, getting the sensation of that breath, move your body as you exhale. Being really present here in this breath, because this breath is the only breath that really exists. And in this breath, everything is good, everything is as it should be. As you're aware of this breath, the experience intensifies. That's it. From here, we're going to inhale and come up to hands and knees. We're going to exhale and press back into our downward facing dog. Let's inhale and lift our gaze between our hands, pressing down into the hands, and exhale, step or walk your feet forwards into forward fold. Let's inhale, rise up to halfway lift. Exhale, back down into forward fold. Inhale, rise up to awkward chair. And exhale, rise up to stand. We'll inhale, sweep those hands towards the ceiling or the sky, lift our gaze. And exhale, hands come back down beside you. Soften those shoulders, release. Now notice your breath. Nice, probably moving quite powerfully through your body, bit of heat in the body, right? Just notice. We're going to see if we can calm the breath down a little. Yeah, we've taken our child's pose and that's done that. And we're just going to keep moving through that calming, that finding of balance. And so as we find our balance, we're going to rock our weight over into our left foot. And we're going to really notice that left foot as it connects down to the floor. And as you press that left foot down into the floor, what happens through the body? Can you feel your left side really switching on and engaged? You've rocked a little over towards that left side. Maybe you can float that right foot up a little, coming up onto the tiptoes. Your balance is, you know, leave your balance is tonight. And that's okay. Maybe from here we can lift that right foot up and just pop it either on the inside of the calf or the inside of the thigh. And where do your hands want to rest? Do they want to come in front of your uh, heart space in prayer? It is a little easier with them outstretched, finding your center. You want to reach them up high, a little bit of space between them. Find the place that works best for you. Gaze soft and low without dropping your head. <laughs> and finding that pressure of your right foot towards your standing leg. Drawing that right knee out a little. And your left hip in the other direction. Can you feel that spaciousness across the front of your pelvis?
notice that you can spread the toes on your left foot a little bit. You can really ground down through that connection. Listen to the sound of your breath. Create the Ujjayi breath. The breath with the little sound, the sound of the ocean. Allow that to support your balance. And then we're going to bring that foot back down to the floor. And just resist the temptation to shake out your legs just yet. Let's bring our hands back down beside us and notice. How are the legs feeling? Does one feel a little heavier than the other? Does one feel a little lighter? Or do they feel pretty much the same? Because whatever you're feeling is fine. We're just noticing, just observing, just observing what's going on for us. And if you can maintain that Ajayi breath, maybe set the intention that you're going to maintain that Ajayi breath for the rest of your practice. Maybe it's the intention that you have it here in this breath because you're so present in this breath. Let's rock our weight over into the other foot. So now we're rocking our weight into the right foot. Now what happens through the body? Don't rush. You don't need to rush to lift the left foot. And instead, we're grounding down into that right foot and we're just noticing. Is there a temptation to lock that knee? Let's soften a little, a little. And not bent, right? But just a little softness there. Can we spread the toes on that right foot? Does it allow us to be a little lighter? Through the right foot, or through the left foot, sorry. So grounding down into the right foot, can we float our left foot? Can we bring that left foot up to the inner calf, to the inner thigh? Can we find again that space for our hands, that downward gaze without tipping the head? Yeah. And can we bring ourselves back to the Ujjayi breath if we've lost it? Breath with the little sound. Just working that left knee away a little, the right hip away in the opposite direction, finding that centre, finding that connection of your right foot down to the floor, the holding of your toes. Notice, are you rocking out onto the outer edge of that right foot? Can you connect down into your big toe as well? Soften the muscles of your face. Find that wonderful connection down to the earth and that wonderful rising of you up and away again. And then let's release that left foot back down to the ground. Again, before you succumb to that temptation, maybe to shake out the legs, just notice, soften your shoulders. Be really aware of the floor down underneath you, of the softening of your shoulders, of the way your arms are relaxed and soft. And then let's give those legs a little shake. Let's give them a little wobble. Now we're going to really get the flesh shaking around, right? So we're going to take a little shake of our legs and see if we can get as much shimmy shaking as we can. The calves are shaking, the thighs are shaking. We're getting that wobble moving right up the body. Yeah, if you can do a little chest shimmy do, then we're going to shake the arms, we're going to shake the hands, we shake those arms and shake the legs at the same time. Let's get everything moving. We're here for a little while. Yeah, so we've got a bit of time to see if we can get a rhythm with this shaking. Still taking the Ujjayi breath. Did you lose that for a moment? Can you come back to it? And 
and then find yourself in stillness. Never real stillness. Breath is still moving. We can still feel that humming, that vibration, that warmth through the body. And then we're going to take a little spinal roll down towards the ground. Now, if you know that spinal rolling is not for you, if you've got any um, parts of the spine that are fused and you need to be conscious of that, we're making our way to forward fold. So get there how you need to. What we're going to do is we're really going to soften our knees. We're going to bring our hands into prayer in front of our heart space. We're going to tuck our chin and we're going to take a little dive down the body. And I like to take this in a few breaths, right? So I like to find part of the dive let my hands go and then take a nice big inhale and feel that expand my upper back between my shoulders and then i like to fold a little deeper really bending those knees a little more then i like to take a breath at the middle of my back feeling that expansion and then i like to fold a little deeper and then i like to feel how the breath affects the back of my pelvis as i take a big inhale and then fold a little deeper on the exhale. That's it. And from here, we're going to bring our hands down to the floor. And if kneeling is a pose that you can take, we're going to come down to kneeling. Now, if kneeling isn't a pose that you, can, that you can take at the moment, then come down into a seated pose. And just let that go. Practice your acceptance. I'm going to have my toes tucked under. Yeah, but that's quite a strong pose, particularly if you've had any issues with your feet. So remember, our, um, we're being kind. Okay? We're not pushing into things that hurt. We're just letting go, just releasing, releasing any of that desire. We push into a pose that is no longer for us. Letting it go. And so if you're in a seated pose with your legs outstretched, maybe sitting up on the blanket, you might enjoy a little fold forwards over the legs here. Now, if you're in this kneeling pose, we're going to take a little back bend, right? But we're not going to take it to its full extent because I can't be there to um, kind of see how that pose is working for you. So I just want you to take this in a small measured dose. So we're going to rise up onto high knees down. We're finding the space through the front of our hips. We're going to bring our hands back behind us, and we're going to lift our gaze towards the ceiling. And already we're taking a nice long stretch through the front of the body. Yeah, but we're keeping those hips stacked above our knees rather than pushing them out forwards. And we're just taking a little lean back from there. So some of you know that this pose doesn't have to camera pose, but we're not taking that to mind. We're just enjoying a little stretch through the front of the body without compressing too much through the back. Yeah, just a little. Yeah, right, we're finding length here. Yeah. We're staying here for one more breath. And then we're coming back on down and we're going to come to hands and knees. That's as far as we're going to go at the moment. We're not going to take anything that counters that pose too strongly just here. We're coming to hands and knees, our wrists underneath our shoulders and our knees placed underneath our sit bones. Now there's sit bone distance apart between the knees and there is shoulder distance apart between the hands, right? So usually the hands are a little wider than the, um, than the knees. It's going to depend on how your body works. But we're going to spread our fingers. We're really going to spread those fingers, find some space between them. And then we're going to imagine we can squeeze our arms a little closer towards each other. We're going to imagine we can hug our knees a little closer towards each other, as though we're trying to make a little um, seam through the long center of our mat and then here we're going to go we're going to inhale we're going to lift into cow pose and then we're going to exhale and we're going to coil up into cat finding that nice little curve that rounding of the back and then again let's inhale and come into cow and let's exhale and coil into cat and then we're going to add another movement to this, right? So we're going to inhale, we're going to rock up into cow. And then we're going to exhale and we're going to coil all the way back into child's pose. Just as, as far as child's pose feels okay for you, maybe you can touch your forehead lightly down. We're going to inhale, we're going to rock all the way back to cow. And you're still keeping those arms and legs nice and strong. 
Let's exhale and press all the way back into our child's pose, taking that nice slow breath, hands still nice and connected to the floor. Let's inhale, rise back up into cow pose. Let's exhale, press back into child's pose. Your movement may be a little quicker than this, so remember you're honoring your breath. We're going to inhale, rising back up into hands and knees. And then let's come on over the seated cross-legged. And your seated cross-legged, just rest the back of your hands down on your knees, palms towards the ceiling, let your shoulders relax. Right, and in a practice with me, we usually take I am mantras, I am statements, so our little mantras. And so we're going to take that here today. And there are three statements, and you may be able to say them out loud. That would be wonderful, right? You might be able to say them out loud with conviction. And all the better if someone around you hears you, all the better if your children hear you or your partner or whoever might be in the space around you. Say these wonderful positive things about yourself, about your true nature. Uh, and so our I am statements are, and repeat them after me, I am strong. I am abundant. I am powerful. I am strong. I am abundant. I am powerful. Knowing that you are you are all of those things. That is not my opinion. That is not my idea. You are strong. You are abundant. You have everything that you need that sits within you. Everything else has been placed on you. And you are powerful. And you are powerful. Your strength and your power have got you to here. And the challenges that you have faced. You are. So just rest here in this knowledge for a couple more breaths, knowing these things, knowing these truths about you. Feeling maybe how nice it is to recognize that, to return to that knowledge, to know that is true. And then we're going to take a big stretch. We're going to take a stretch of our arms up over here. Reaching those hands up towards the ceiling. Yeah. And then can we bring them together? Can we press our palms together? And can we draw those hands back down and touch the heel of the palms to the back of the head? Yeah, maybe, maybe you can get there. Let's move like this with the feet. Let's exhale, drawing our elbows towards each other. Now just the fingertips are touching, right? And then we're going to inhale and we're going to press those elbows wide again and see if we can press the palms. We're going to exhale and draw those elbows towards each other. Just the fingertips are touching now. And then we're going to press those palms together. One more breath. One phase of breath for each movement. Squeezing. And then squeezing back in the other direction. That's it. Let's reach those hands again towards the ceiling. Pointing those fingers sky high. And then let's bring them apart. Feel how that space is a little more comfortable. Yeah? And then we're going to turn our palms towards the floor and we're going to reach our hands out wide. Now something might have happened here. You might have collapsed into your low back and flooded your sternum forwards. Can we just kind of counter that a little? Can we draw our belly buttons in slightly? Can we lift our pelvic floor on the exhale? And as you inhale, you can soften the pelvic floor. See your belly moves. As you exhale, maybe there's a squeezing or lifting of the pelvic floor. <laughs> and then as you inhale, soften. You've got this, you've got this. We're going to take some little circles with our hands. First, that relieves the pose a little, and then after a little while, it starts to feel challenging as well. But hey, we're just here in this breath, just noticing this breath. The inhale, the way that it affects your body, and then the exhale the way that affects your body. If you have shoulder pain, this pose is not going to feel good, right? 
So take a pose that does. Maybe it's a fold forwards over your cross legs. Maybe it's something else, a little shoulder stretch. Let's roll those hands back in the other direction. Let's make the circles a little wider. Noticing your breath. And let's make those circles a little smaller. We're still moving in that same direction, right? You're all good, you've got this. Remember, you're strong, strong. But you're strong enough to know your abundance. You're strong enough to know when a pose is not working for you. Let's bring those hands together in prayer in front of the heart space. Let's press them. But at the same time, let's draw our shoulders back a little. Now, can you keep the shoulders where they are so you're not shrugging them? And can you inhale and start to float those arms up? And then exhale and draw them down. Now, I didn't float them up very far, right? I'm being conscious of how my shoulders feel. I'm going to inhale and see if I can keep pressing those hands nice and strongly towards each other, but float those arms up. And then I'm going to exhale and bring them down. It doesn't feel good to me to straighten my arms. It does it for you. Yeah, notice. Be aware of the sensations in your body and practice accordingly. We're going to release those arms. We're going to turn our hands inside out and reach them up over here. So we just re release the palms rather. Yeah, so we've made a little um, basket with our hands. We've turned it inside out. And then we're going to weave that basket the other way. So now the other little finger is towards the edge. And then let's release those hands. Let's soften them down towards the floor. We're going to take a couple of rolls of our shoulders. Sometimes those movements are really strong. Yeah, we're going to roll our shoulders the other way. That's still feeling okay. If they're not, why? What happened there? What are you going to avoid next time? Okay, now from here we're going to take a little twist because what is a practice that is really quite centered around the, um, that is, focused around the center of the body without a twist. So what we're going to bring is our right knee towards the front of the body and our left knee is going to step over the top. And we're going to find the floor down underneath us. We're going to take a few breaths here just noticing. Now if this feels too strong with that right knee bent, you're going to extend that right leg out long. And that's the um, modification for this pose. If it still doesn't feel okay, there might be a twist that you prefer. Now from here, we're going to lift up the right hand. We're going to rest the right elbow towards the left knee. And we're not doing that to pull ourselves around. It just makes a quite nice stretch through that left hip. We're going to bring that left hand behind us or beside us and we're going to roll open across the shoulders and then as we exhale there's a little squeezing lift of the pelvic floor a little drawing of the belly so the sides of the belly towards each other and a little rotation around the twist now it's always important to note you're not trying to crack your back in this pose right what we're doing is we're feeling a lovely little stretch maybe particularly through your left hip now we're feeling a nice squeezing through the belly, like a wringing out of your digestive system. But there's also power here, right? And that power becomes quite centrally, like right at the center of the, maybe behind the belly button, maybe it, it kind of radiates around that point. And then we're going to come back around to center and we're going to extend our legs out long. And with those legs extended out long, we're going to give them a little shake. We're pounding them down towards the floor. I'm leaning back into my hands, right? I don't expect you to be balancing up in a seated pose. Just lean back, give those legs a little pound. And then let's come around to the other side. Doesn't that feel good when you get those legs to shake out? And then we're going to step around that knee in front of the body. The other foot steps around to the front. Yes, yeah, so and now our left knee is out in front of the body. And 
Hang on. <laughs> and the other foot steps up over the top. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I heard someone's um, voice come on and it distracted me a little. So we've got that um, left knee out in front of the body, the right foot steps over the top. We're going to bring that left elbow over and we're going to rest it on the knee. We're going to bring that other hand behind or beside us and we're just going to take that little roll open of the shoulders. Now remember, if it doesn't feel okay having that knee bent, that left knee bent, then extend it out long. We're going to inhale, rise up a little. And then as we exhale, we take a little squeeze and we rotate around. Yeah, so again, we're feeling a really nice stretch, perhaps this time a little more through the right hip. I often feel a stretch through my left hip, whichever way I'm going, right? Because that side is a little more solid for me. And so you might feel the same. So whatever you're feeling is, is good, right? Because you're aware of it. You're aware of what you're feeling. You're aware of that sensation. But we can feel that strength right through the center. We can feel that strength, that power at the center of the pose as we squeeze a little deeper, if that feels okay. And it might be a squeezing deeper because as you inhale, you rock out of the pose. And as you exhale, you move into the space that you did occupy. As you inhale, you rock out of the pose a little. And as you exhale, maybe you squeeze into that pose that you did occupy. Right, let's unwind and come back around to center. Again, we're going to take that movement where we extend our legs out long, have our hands behind us. We're going to just shake our legs and just really shake them down towards the floor, feeling the calves pounding down on the ground. Again, never taking anything that's going to hurt, <laughs> but just taking this pose so that we're really shaking the flesh around, so really moving it around on the go, so that we're giving everything just a little bit of a massage out of the floor. And then from here, let's come into butterfly pose. As long as butterfly feels okay. As long as your hips feel okay with butterfly pose, soles of the feet rest together. If you can, take hold of your hands. If that's not a possibility, then just have your hands resting back behind you. That's it. Now, sometimes in this pose, we have the temptation to really curve our spine, but we're going to lift and rise up out of the sit bones so that we're finding that length and just softening those shoulders away. We're going to stay here for a few breaths. It might be that you can press your feet a little closer together. We're not going to flap our knees like wings. <laughs> We're just going to use that um, tension of our feet pressing together to maybe soften those knees a little further down towards the floor, but maybe not. Maybe this pose is just as it needs to be right here. How is this breath? Can you feel the inhale expand through your body? And can you feel the exhale soften and deepen? Can you feel that inhale expand through your body? And can you feel that exhale soften and deepen? Let's stay here for one more breath. And then we're going to draw those knees back towards each other. We're going to give them a little squeeze and we're going to hug our bodies down over our knees if you can. Don't get caught up on things if you can't, right? Practice your acceptance. Just be, everything is just as it should be. It's all good. Now from here, we're going to play around with a little boat pose. And we're going to start with the modification of the pose, soles of the feet down, if you want. If it feels strong enough for you to be here holding onto your knees, then be there. But if you feel like you can maybe reach your hands away long, then have a go. Does that feel okay? Or do you automatically collapse through your back? If that happens, bring those hands back to your knees. That's enough. It's enough for you. Breathe. Now, if you're here with your arms outstretched and you want to take another movement, let's try this. Let's inhale and lift our left foot. And let's exhale and pop it back down. Let's inhale and lift our right foot. Let's exhale and pop it back down. Now, let's inhale and lift our left foot just parallel to the floor. And then let's exhale and lift our right foot. 
Let's inhale and place that left foot back down. Let's exhale and place that right foot back down. Let's inhale and lift that right foot. Let's exhale and lift that left. Let's inhale and place that right foot back down. Let's exhale and place that left. Let's see if we can do that with a little less rocking, right? And so now you might minimize the movement of your foot a little. Let's exhale and lift our left foot high. So wait for your exhale to lift your left foot. Just parallel to the floor. Let's inhale and pop it back down. Let's exhale and lift our right foot. Let's inhale and pop it back down. Let's exhale, lift our left foot. Let's inhale, pop it back down. Let's exhale, lift our right foot. Let's inhale, pop it back down. Now let's leave it there. We're going to extend those legs out long again. And this time we're going to take a little fold forwards over them. It can be quite nice to just step back through your sit bones. Lift up along your body. And then maybe you have the space to take a little fold. And once you find that fold, maybe then you can tuck your chin lightly. Maybe then you can extend the crown of your head away from your tail and fold a little more deeply. How is this breath? Is it full? Can you hear it? Does it have a little sound like the ocean? Is it the Ujjayi breath? Notice the breath. Notice that little restriction at the base of your throat. Be present within that breath. Your forward fold is what it is, your seated forward fold. It's all good. Your breath keeps you present. Keeps you grounded. Notice. Let's rise back up to seated. We're coming on down to the full way. We're going to prepare for Shavasana seat here. So if you're like me and you like to have a blanket for your yoga practice, then get your blanket ready. If you know that you have that low back pain and you want to support yourself with a blanket or a rolled up mat underneath your knees or a cushion from the couch, whatever it is, then be ready for that. Best at the start of your practice and we have as least disturbance to the body as possible as you come down and get cozy, right? You can be as comfortable as you want. So we're going to roll on over onto our side and we're going to support ourselves all the way down onto the floor. And then once we're here, we're just going to really release and let go. We're just going to stay here for a bit. And then let's draw those knees towards our belly. I always like to lift my hips and pop them back down, give my um, back a little more space. So we're going to squeeze them towards us. We're feeling that lovely compression through the hips, that release through the low back. Let's take another little squeeze. And then let's make a bit of space between them. And hold on to them with your hands. If you want. We're going to take a little gentle rock from side to side. And how is this breath? Is it full? Does it have the sound of the ocean? Maybe you want to take little circles with your knees. Rolling them around one way. And then rolling them, around, rolling them around the other way. From here, we're going to pop the soles of our feet down on the floor. We're going to extend our legs out long if that feels okay. Blanket under your knees if you want to. And we're just going to rest those hands down beside us. And we're going to tuck our chin just a little to find that length down the back of our neck. But then we're going to relax. Now relax across your shoulders, across your belly, across your arms and your legs. Relax your head. Notice. Notice your breath. Close your eyes. And find that with this wonderful stillness, there is also the rhythm, the movement of your breath, moving your body. 
And so as you inhale through your nose, you can feel the temperature of the air outside. But as you exhale through your nose, you notice that it has been warmed to the temperature of your body. You are aware of sounds in the room. Maybe sounds outside, but they're okay. They're just the sounds of life around you. And so you release away from them and come towards the sound of your breath as it moves your body lightly. And so you notice as you inhale that your body expands, that you're connected deeply towards the earth, and that as you exhale, your body deepens a little more towards the earth. You soften. As you inhale, there's that gentle rising up and away. And as you exhale, you soften and release. As you inhale, you draw and nurture nourishment from the earth. And as you exhale, you release anything that doesn't serve you back out towards the earth. As you inhale, you nourish and nurture each and every one of your cells as you draw in. And as you exhale, you release, you let go, you soften. You continue to breathe in a steady rhythm, aware of this wonderful connection to the earth, knowing that you are a child of nature and that everything is just as it should be, the only way that it could be. And so you let go, you soften and relax. Softening and relaxing all of the muscles of your body. Softening and relaxing your attention. Softening and relaxing even your breath. As you release, as you let go, a little more and surrender completely to Shavasana. With your next inhale, again noticing your connection down towards the earth. Continuing to breathe in a steady rhythm. But your breath has returned to its own natural rhythm. So you're allowed to. That rhythm is good. That rhythm is all that it needs to be. That rhythm reflects the energy of you. Isn't that a wonderful energy? And feeling that energy rise up a little within your body. And from here, when you're ready, maybe increasing the movement, maybe a little wriggle of your fingers and toes, maybe a little stretch in a yawn. And then slowly rolling over onto your side. And from your side, finding the floor underneath you. Finding your body down on the floor, being aware of that pressure, 
then pressing down into the earth, resting yourself up into a seated position. And when you find yourself in the seated position, know that in a practice with me, we take three wounds usually at the end of our practice. Yeah. So take those with me today. And they start with an inhale through the nose and an warm out through the mouth. And they feel good. So have a go when you are ready. Wonderful to practice with you. Namaste.